Okay, let's do this. Reviewing the RTX 4070 is kind of a no-win situation for me because on the one hand, everyone is furious about the unaffordability of modern GPUs, and rightly so. But on the other hand, I have to acknowledge that this is the best value proposition that we've seen in years. Then, on the other, other hand, there's the fact that Nvidia, who controls all of this, appears to be making this product look like a good value by simply making all of their other ones a terrible value. I really do wish I could just sit this one out because by the time I'm done, at least some of you will have misdirected your anger toward me, the messenger. But here goes. This segue to our sponsor. Videocom, making a presentation for work or school? Let Videocom help you spice it up by adding annotations, webcams, videos and images, and much more with just a few simple clicks. Check them out at the link down below. Looking at the specs alone, the RTX 4070 is pretty underwhelming. At just 295 millimeters squared, this is the smallest 70 class GPU that we've seen since the GTX 770. And with the same CUDA core count as the RTX 3070, this is the first time ever that Nvidia hasn't given us more shaders generation over generation. But, but wait, wait, no, no. There are some things to get excited about here. Um, boost clocks have risen a whopping 43% compared to the RTX 3070. And the change to 12 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory is a welcome upgrade as we continue to watch VRAM usage in modern games go from unreasonable to downright idiotic. To quantify our excitement then, the lab performed a whopping 984 tests across 11 GPUs with CPUs from both Intel and AMD. We're gonna have links down below. They even threw in the Intel RK770 for funsies. Now, 1080p performance in rasterized games might seem kind of irrelevant for an enthusiast tier GPU these days, but for many competitive gamers, high frame rates are way more important than high resolution. And if you're one of them, the RTX 4070 is proper quick with performance landing within 2% of the RTX 3080. This might not be the leap forward that you were hoping for, but given the pricing of even secondhand 3080s, it's kind of looking like a W. Kind of, give me a sec. At 1440p, the story remains the same with the 4070 neck and neck with the RTX 3080. But what really stood out to us here at both of these resolutions is how flippin' fast AMD's last gen has gotten thanks to their ongoing software updates. The 6800 XT now enjoys a small lead over the 3080 with the 7900 XT coming in a whole 40% faster than the 4070 and nearly matching the RTX 4080, a GPU that costs $400 more. Then at 4K, the 4070's W gets even more twisted and complex because outside of Forza, the RTX 3080 ends up outrunning it by anywhere from five to 19%. Or at least it does until you turn on ray tracing where the gap narrows significantly. Now the story Nvidia wants to focus on here is not how the 4070 beats last gen by 25 to 30%, but rather on how it convincingly destroys the GTX 1080. From my point of view though, Beating a seven-year-old card is not the most incredible of feats, unless your name is Intel. It's just obvious that Nvidia is bringing this up because they recognize the generation over generation upgrade is not that big, and they hope that it's all you Pascal owners out there that are finally gonna bite the bullet and upgrade. Moving on to productivity. In our benchmarks, there was one standout. In Photoshop, the Intel Arc A770 was able to best not only the 4070, but also the 4070 Ti and was even within spitting distance of the RTX 4080. I mean, I'm not sure that the average user updating their Tinder profile is gonna notice, but whatever hardware acceleration Intel built for Arc definitely works. Then outside of Photoshop, Arc returns to its rightful place at the bottom of the stack and the rest of the story remains largely the same as gaming with the RTX 3080 and 4070 trading places depending on the exact workload and AMD once again showing off that fine wine driver development. Outside of Blender, which remains a sore spot for Team Red, the 6800 XT put on an amazing show, winning more titles than it lost at a lower price. 
So if we're looking at the performance of an RTX 3080, but at the price of an RTX 3070 Ti, given how crap GPU prices have been for the last couple of years, this is great, right? Well, yes, but saying an RTX 4070 for $600 is better than an RTX 3080 for like, what did it peak at, $1,600 or something like that? That's like saying that a paddle to the ass is better than a slap to the face. Both can be fun when the kids are out of town. And we do have matching couples undies on lttstore.com, by the way, to make this even more awkward. But none of that is the point. The point is that when compared to last gen, sure, Nvidia gave us a solid increase in performance but they also gave us an equally solid increase in price. And this is the second time in two generations that they've pulled this move. When we went from the 1000 series to the 2000 series, they did the same thing. We got a nearly proportional increase in both price and performance with Nvidia hoarding the benefits of their new architecture and using them to line their own pockets rather than passing them along to the consumer. You see, the industry norm has been that as our manufacturing technology improves, the same amount of compute becomes less expensive. In this case, Nvidia went from Samsung's eight nanometer node to TSMC N5. That's how they packed the same number of CUDA cores into just 295 millimeters squared compared to the 392 millimeter squared die of the 3070, which is super cool, but then, if it supposedly didn't cost any less, why the heck did they even bother? Well, there are two reasons for that. Efficiency, and then probably more importantly, the RTX 4090. But let's talk efficiency first. For the amount of performance that the RTX 4070 delivers, it sips power. It has a TGP of 200 watts, but Nvidia says that the average gaming power draw is more like 184, and in our testing, that was basically bang on, which is darn impressive given that the performance comparable RTX 3080 drew an average of 296 watts during the same test. Also a good sign is that the maximum recorded wattage of the 4070 was just 233 watts compared to a whopping 412 for the 3080. So not only will you be saving money on your monthly energy bill, but you also don't have to worry about a power spike sending your aging power supply into the shadow realm. Now you might be hoping that this means there's a lot of headroom for overclocking, but sadly, it looks like Nvidia has really locked this card down and we weren't able to meaningfully improve performance by tinkering with any of the knobs and dials. I don't think that this efficiency gain is why Nvidia decided to go TSMC 5N though. And it might actually have been better for consumers if they just took everything they learned about the mature eight nanometer Samsung node and then made better GPUs with it kind of like what they did back in 2014 using the same 28 nanometer node for both the GTX 770 and 970. The issue though, is if they had done that, the RTX 4090 simply wouldn't have been feasible. It would have drawn too much power and it would have given AMD an opportunity to have a competitive flagship, which would be utterly unacceptable. The 4090 is a true generational leap, coming in at just 7% more cost than the 3090, while being over 50% faster. So then, why the heck isn't that true of the rest of the lineup, Nvidia? Well, because from their point of view, they did give you a generational performance leap, but through AI rather than raw grunt. And in fairness, they aren't entirely wrong here. By turning on DLSS 3 frame generation, the RTX 4070 is able to easily dispatch the RTX 3080 and even deliver performance about on par with the 4080 before its AI assistance is kicked in. Now, frame generation may increase input latency, but Nvidia Reflex does go a long way towards bringing it back down. Is it as good as simply having a faster GPU and not using any of these tricks? That's a topic for another video. Sadly, our labs team really does need to do things like sleep, even if it's in their tents. Adding to Nvidia's argument, currently there are dozens of games that support DLSS 3 and the list is rapidly expanding, so you might as well just turn it on. But detracting from Nvidia's argument, there are also tens of thousands of games that do not support DLSS 3 and will perform better on the 6800 XT. Making the 4070's position more precarious is the fact that pricing of 3070's and 3080's on eBay has been in freefall. 
Pro tip, by the way, don't use buy it now because auctions have been completing literally $100 lower. Now, it's worth noting that the 4070 has some non-gaming generational advantages. It's new, so it'll have driver support for longer, and it comes with a warranty, and it features AV1 encoding and decoding, which is genuinely great, and as a bonus, this thing has been shockingly stable for being so early in its life cycle. AMD could learn a thing or two. This is a really good product, but that doesn't mean that we are unreservedly happy about it. NVIDIA is whining about how they simply can't pass along any silicon cost savings. It just doesn't hold a ton of water. Development costs for new process nodes have increased substantially, but I also think that NVIDIA does have some room to move here if everyone else's pricing is anything to go by. One day, ARC will save us. <laughs> but it is not this day. This day, I'm going to tell you about our sponsor. Vessi, it's April, and you know what that means? Rain. That's where Vessi comes in. They claim their shoes are 100% waterproof, keeping your feet dry during those unexpected downpours. Take them on and off with ease. Vessi has designed their shoes to be stretchy and convenient to wear. They're slip-ons, yes! With a wide range of styles available, you're sure to find a pair that fits your lifestyle. Even better, their shoes are made from cruelty-free products right down to the glue. No more checking the weather right before you head out. A pair of Vessis will ensure your feet are taken care of. Rain or shine, snow or grime, there's always an occasion to throw on a pair of Vessis. Not to mention, their styles are modern and trendy AF. Treat your feet. Check out Vessi at Vessi.com slash Linus Tech Tips and use code Linus Tech Tips for 15% off. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy our coverage of the CPU that you should pair with really any of these GPUs, the 7800X3D. It is flipping unreal for gaming.